This is Utopic Software's demonstration of the Persistent Suite solution. Whereas the majority of this video concentrates on Persistent's unique and proprietary ability to self-heal a PC from any situation, from misconfiguration to unknown performance issues to catastrophic failure of a hard drive, the goal of this video is to share with you how our dynamic, multifunction solution dramatically improves your compute availability, end user productivity, and promotes the transformation to a PC as a service model for greater lifecycle control without having to forklift or overhaul your existing infrastructure. We will show you that Persistent is a powerful, paradigm changing, and disruptive technology with strong ROI that repairs a corrupted OS back to the last known desired state on a single reboot, all in about 45 seconds. It reduces break fix help desk incidents by more than 70% and eliminates the need to re image. It preserves configuration and policies of the desired state in accordance with your compliance needs and makes your lifecycle initiatives predictable, precise, and repeatable. This demonstration is more than the simplification of the repair and recovery process. We also cover other key concepts including ease of integration with SCCM or any ITSM solution, workplace transformation aka PC as a service, incorporating zero touch imaging, the means to control updates and patches, PC refresh, secure device wipe, and other lifecycle initiatives. Lastly, we give you a peek at the automations that allow your IT team to increase effectiveness at a fraction of your current expenditures. Bob Worley, Utopic CEO, will present the solution, use cases, and ROI figures. This presentation is a demo that will answer many questions, but we encourage you to reach out to us for a live one-on-one -on -one Q and A demo with a trial evaluation on how our solution achieves your workplace transformation. In this next section, we will review the architecture and required engineering to enable the organization's workplace transformation goals. As we have mentioned, having an integrated lifecycle platform is critical to achieve success with any device as a service project. Another key element to our solution is leveraging modern technology. Microsoft SCCM and Utopic's Persistent Suite will provide the necessary management framework to automate the many use cases required to achieve your DAS goals. Manual and inefficient processes will be optimized through automation. Complexity will be greatly reduced. Support costs will be reduced. The business will be much more productive and customer SAT will greatly increase across the global landscape. As you can see, Microsoft SCCM is the de facto stand, standard in the industry with more than 75% of the market share. As a single pane of glass, SCCM will be able to manage seamlessly the variety of use cases to establish a DAS model. As Microsoft has announced in 2016, Zero Touch has set a very high bar for enterprise organizations, especially those organizations that are on a global basis and have large legacy infrastructures. During most of our meetings uh, to date, the top of mind discussion points become how are organizations going to achieve zero touch for their tier one use cases? The answer is much more than migrating Windows 10. Every aspect of the PC lifecycle is critical to an organization. Change management is is ever changing and is ever challenging in the organization. Patching and application update must be, must be standardized and consistent across the global landscape. Compliance and policy enforcement must be automated. Active directory and GPO structures must be consistent, must follow recommended practices, and must be automated. Auditing and reporting will provide the metrics so that manual processes that do exist in the environment can continue to be automated. Security is now top of mind for all employees across the globe and has to be part of our daily operations going forward. As we think about migrating to Windows 10, some of the biggest challenges that we see in the marketplace today is app packaging and app rationalization. So making sure that app 
the testing of these applications and the packages and the rationalization and any remediation that's required is essential before migrating to Windows 10. As you can see, the SCCM enterprise workflow will allow distributed and global environments to achieve the necessary service level agreements, no matter how small or how large the locations are. So as we look at the architecture, it's so much more flexible than most of the traditional platforms that exist today. And these flexible, this flexibility will provide a solid framework no matter what the global requirements will dictate. Before we conduct the live persistent suite demonstration, I would like to review the highly scalable architecture. Very similar to Microsoft SCCM, persistent suite can scale to hundreds of thousands of computers. Depending on the use cases, one management console could support 50,000 computers. For the purposes of supporting 50,000 global PCs, we are recommending five management consoles to distribute across the global regions and one disaster recovery server for redundancy. But frequently, we were asked by customers, how do you support those small offices or those work from home offices? And again, only in this case of a failed hard drive, do you require a local snapshot service? So, for instance, if a small office or remote office employee has or experiences a hard drive crash, a new hard drive can be installed in that computer. And then that snapshot, the last known desired state, can be deployed uh, from a USB, DVD, or a server class PC to that machine. Now again, just recall, although each system is autonomous and doesn't require any domain or any network connectivity to conduct a self-heal, self-repair of the PC, the, the additional value of having the distribution point is only for failed hard drive situations. So when we look at other architectural questions that we receive, it's typically around the size uh, of the snapshots on the PCs as well as on the distributed site servers. So just to give you an example, PC snapshots are actually compressed three to one. And again, we leverage this modern technology and this innovation to do deduplication and single file repository to avoid bloated snapshots. So a typical snapshot on a PC that has a 20 or 25 gig uh, snapshot or image on it is roughly six to seven gig. The site server supporting 10,000 PCs with four make and model computers with Win 7 and Win 10 snapshots, this will require roughly 120 gigabits. So again, as you can see, the snapshot footprint is lightweight and is really a non-issue for global organizations because again, the self-healing is done local to the system it's completely autonomous to the network, does not require domain or network connectivity. In the event that you have a failed hard drive, this is the only uh, situation or use case where you would need a USB, DVD, or a site server to actually download the last known desired state from. Welcome to Persistent Suites demonstration. Throughout the presentation, we have discussed the use case automation that is necessary to enable organizations to achieve workspace or device as a service. Persistent Suite is the only self-healing software solution to enable a true workspace or device as a service model to help organizations reduce cost and complexity, not to mention increase productivity. The first thing as part of the demonstration is to show a working system, uh, just so you know that this is a live demonstration. So as you can see, uh, PDF works, my accessories uh, calculator work, all of my Microsoft Office applications and workloads like Microsoft Word, um, Excel, PowerPoint. So all of my Microsoft workloads are working just fine. I also can log in as administrator on the network. And this again simulates what a help desk provider or help desk uh, systems admin would do during the troubleshooting process of slow performance or a misconfiguration or some level of security threat that might have impacted an end user. And then also 
uh, in case I need internet access to download remediation solutions or updates that are not necessarily on the machine currently. I'll just show active network connectivity. And now what I'm going to do is rather than uh, delete the registry or services or processes, what I'll do is I'll create a catastrophic failure to the system. So essentially I'll download Security Shield, which is a form of malware. Many of, many of us have seen this in the, the late 90s. Um, we've also seen uh, variations and variants of this through um, PC Optimizer, which is another form of malware, but also ransomware. As, as, as little as uh, the last 24 months, 36 months, we've seen ransomware and variants of ransomware like WannaCry and Petrie and things of that nature uh, compromise the system. Essentially what malware is doing to this system, and again, um, I'm only demonstrate this as a, a quick way to, to create a disaster to this computer. But essentially what's happening is my entire file system is getting corrupted and I'm being locked out of my uh, applications and my operating system. So essentially now my, um, my uh, software, uh, my, my intrusion detection uh, solution is actually working. It's showing that I've been uh, essentially a detection of some kind of issue has occurred on the system. And again, I'm demonstrating this for a few reasons. One is just to show a catastrophic situation that would cause an organization to re-image a computer. But most oftentimes, again, four incidents per year is what uh, the industry analysts claim for a computer and endpoint. Um, in our ROI statistics, we only use two incidents per year per PC, and you'll see those numbers reflected. But essentially, I wanted to show a re-imaging case. But again, most of our customers only have things like slow performance or the application didn't load or I lost my VPN setting or, or the operating system didn't load. Um, so again, I think I'm good and infected now. Um, so now I'll try to demonstrate uh, certain things working. And as you can see, calculator is now not working. Uh, my Adobe PDF uh, application is not working. Uh, my Microsoft Word uh, applications uh, not working. Uh, Excel uh, not working, uh, PowerPoints not working, and as you can see down here, again, my intrusion detection is doing its job, um, again, with my layered security approach, but again, we want to remediate the system. We're not a preventative solution. We are going to remediate and ensure quick availability in less than 45 seconds. Now, everything you're going to see here is what we call on-demand repair, so everything stays local to the computer. It can actually be scheduled through the management console, through a systems administrator to invoke, or it can be handled through a command line. So if I wanted to right click on the service, I could schedule a snapshot, I could do a repair point, high level, low level uh, repair, or again, uh, my system is set on policy to actually, on every restart, I can actually do um, a high level repair, which will actually... Um, uh, repair the system in less than 45 seconds um, once I restart the computer. So essentially what you're going to see here is the system will power down. And again, all of this is happening local to this computer. Uh, so the system will actually power down. The BIOS will load. Then our software loads. And you'll see our software load because of the, the splash screen will have persistent sweep. Most of our customers, or nearly all of our customers, actually change that splash screen with their organization's logo so that they can create awareness throughout the organization and to their employees that IT is actually serving as an awareness and as, as a routine maintenance check or a compliance check on their system. They're running this routine maintenance uh, to ensure a desired working state so that that end user can be productive. So again, here's the, there's the splash screen. This would be the splash screen that would get changed with the uh, uh, organization's logo. Again, at this point, um, start your watch because this is about you know anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds. And again, uh, all of this is happening uh, local to the computer. Nothing is traversing across the network. Uh, my computer is set on an on-demand repair. So every reboot of my machine, we actually do a repair. Now, most of our customers, probably 95% of our customers, um, they actually do a repair on demand where essentially um, the user will call the service desk or fill out a web 
uh, self-help web screen and actually the repair will be conducted on demand either through keyword searches or through a systems administrator on the help desk actually applying the command or the repair policy to that endpoint. The only time we actually do repair um, on a restart or, or end user logout is for a customer facing kiosk, an ATM machine, maybe an airport terminal, uh, those kinds of use cases. So again, repair on demand is actually preferred uh, for the organizations and uh, especially on a global basis for uh, the corporate uh, type user. So we're just about done here uh, with the repair. Should take a couple seconds and uh, we're done. So we've now essentially done a complete repair of the system on a self-heal basis. And again, this gets back to what Microsoft was messaging back in 2016. Enterprise organizations need to get to zero touch. So now my operating system will load and uh, I'll log into my system. The persistent suite self-heal does not actually repair the data. So all the user data is left alone and is actually, um, we recommend that, a, that all the user data is stored on the network share. So only the operating system, the files, and the applications will actually get recovered. So now if we go and examine uh, the system, so if we go to calculator, uh, we should see that that comes up. If we go to our Adobe uh, PDF document, um, we see that that comes up. If we look at our Microsoft workloads, so Office is up and running. And you can actually probably tell from the last boot um, that the applications are actually opening up a little bit quicker than they did um, while the computer was in use for about a week. And then PowerPoint. So this actually serves as a very good demonstration of how we can actually eliminate the troubleshooting of this computer and actually do on-demand repair. So you can see now I can get into my registry. Everything is working wonderfully. So now that we've fixed the root cause, what many of our organizations do is they actually invoke the management console to actually see exactly what happened, what files from an analytics perspective were actually recovered. So we'll log into the roles-based management console and again, this is a web-based console that can actually be um, uh, deployed uh, as, many, as many times as necessary. Again, we get to a 10,000 uh, PCs to every uh, site server. Uh, that is the recommended. And in, in your case, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, for 50,000 uh, PCs to have five uh, distributed servers with one uh, disaster recovery-based server. And so now that I, again, now that I mentioned that we fixed the root cause, we want to look at um, the exact analytics for my computer at the boot occurrence 453. And you can see the date and timestamp of when we did this 11.05 uh, p.m. tonight, we did, or 11.04 p.m. tonight, we did a repair. And this system shows all the files that we actually repaired so that you can actually look at those root causes as well as avoid any repeat cases across your enterprise. So again, change files. You can see we added files that were deleted right here. So again, you get a full scenario of the analytics behind what we repaired. The next thing we always uh, run across and questions that are frequently asked is, how do you take snapshots? And when is the appropriate time to take a snapshot? And again, because we operate pre-boot of the operating system, and whether you're uh, using SCCM or LAN desk or Windows Update, you can actually automate the Windows Update snapshot process. So again, we'll set a Windows uh, uh, WSUS uh, patch update. We'll actually schedule the update to occur at 10 p.m. and we can do this on Thursday. And again, this can be set up through Active Directory and through group policy type um, policies that you might set up across your tree structure here. So you could do it based on different locations geographically or you could do it based on a line of business. However you want to uh, set the system up, 
But essentially what's going to happen is before Windows Update applies the patch to that end target machine, we're going to actually conduct a repair to ensure that that endpoint is at a desired state or what we call a QA state. Then once that system repairs itself, then Windows Update applies the patch and then we take an automated uh, snapshot by doing a batch command in the background. This whole process takes about six or seven seconds. So the process is only doing um, uh, the delta that's on the system today. So if you have three snapshots and you only want to keep three snapshots on the system, the last snapshot that you took will be removed and essentially replaced with this last known snapshot to, to have the total of three uh, snapshots on the computer. Again, this is also uploaded to the central server or the site server, depending on how the policy is set up in case the system does experience a failed hard drive. So relative to self-healing and relative to the analytics and relative to the, um, the snapshot process, that is really um, all is, is required to understand about the self-healing component. Again, there's some tasks that are done so that if you wanted to um, uh, set up an automated high-level repair, you can actually invoke that just by using our out-of-the-box tasks to do that. The next thing I want to show is the use cases around automated imaging workflow. And so again, you could you can set this up like any distribution uh, facility. You could do um, uh, uh, things set up or templates set up by ADOU pass, so you can have different uh, lines of business uh, uh, images. Uh, you could have base images based on Windows 7 or Windows 10. Um, and then again, you can have an imaging console that shows when a system has been completely imaged and ready, to, um, ready for production. But really what's exciting about the workflow is not necessarily the actual workflow, but the automation behind the workflow, which is actually task-oriented. So very similar to um, the self-heal capability, we have these out-of-the-box tasks that are already pre-built. And they're very similar to the SCCM task sequence process so that um, a person that is actually doing task sequencing with SCCM is also going to be familiar with uh, task sequencing with Persistent Suite. So for instance, this task sequence is an automated uh, imaging process using BitLocker. So as we all know, there's a challenge around timing for BitLockered type machines that require a new base image. So install base image, boot to the OS, suspend BitLocker, change computer name, join domain, auto reboot, clear the auto reboot logs, resume BitLocker, and then create the new repair point. And then the system is in production ready state and ready for deployment. And again, you can actually customize these task sequences. Like for instance, if you wanted to power the PC off, assign that action as number 10, that could be done as well. So again, all automation through the templates the workflow is there but there's no it's not necessary to leverage the workflow because you're going to use the automated task sequence process the next thing i'll throw i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll discuss is the um the opportunity to in place migration as this is a requirement um and based on on uh, your eas um uh, agreement uh, you can actually uh, look at different flexible ways to do in-place migration but again you'll need the automation behind the scenes to actually provide the true value of an in-place migration and so again through a task sequence process you can do auto run of the backups of the profiles and settings and data you can execute a batch script to wipe the drive. You can install the base image. You can suspend BitLocker, boot to the OS, change computer name, etc. So all of these processes, including migrating from a traditional MBR Windows 7 machine to a Windows 10 UEFI machine, can be done in place in an automated way. The next uh, use case that I want to discuss with you is um, the rebuild of failed hard drive. So this is a popular use case for hard drive failures. And this can happen um, in a remote site, um, a small office site. This could be done on a, on a regional medium sized site or in a, in a large uh, corporate facility. And again, using the task sequence process can be completely automated. So one click of the box here will install last Tuesday's last known state. 
um, on the system. We'll join domain, we'll auto reboot, we'll clear the auto reboot logs, and we'll create the repair point. Now, of course, these task sequences occur only when you install the new hard drive on the system. And again, if you want to add things or other actions like power the PC off, you can assign the action in step number six, and there you have it. You'll have a failed hard drive recovery process that is completely automated, uh, zero touch on the system. The next thing I want to show is, um, and this will be the last use case that we discuss, is secure wipe uh, stolen machines. So again, leveraging the feature of, of a DOD-based NIST 800-88 clear wipe process, we actually applied that feature and that process for stolen machines. So if somebody were to steal a laptop, you could actually, again, using the automated task sequence, you could actually wipe the drive in place. Again, the user could be remote. Somebody you know, smashes the windshield. They grab the laptop. They go into a Starbucks. They try to hit the wireless environment. What happens is once that system hits any HTTP network, the machine has a policy sent from the central console. As the PC tries to check in, it'll automate the wipe process of that computer. And what's really cool about that is not only do you have a decommissioning for uh, PCs that you're going to migrate, but you have the ability to even track uh, stolen machines by MAC address, by PC model, by PC serial number, hard drive model, hard drive size, hard drive serial, performed on, start time, end time, the username that performed the wipe, the DOD NIST 800-88 uh, is a one-pass, three-wipe process and then whether or not it was successful or failed. And that concludes our demonstration of a very unique solution using self-heal, self-repair in an automated way. In this final section of the presentation, I will recap three use cases as well as go through the ROI for those use cases and then leverage a final slide to summarize the use cases across and the ROI across a three-year period. So as you saw with the demonstration, the most impactful use case is the service desk self-healing use case. So no matter what the issue is to the end user device, um, we will be able to repair that system in less than 45 seconds. And essentially, uh, misconfigurations or any unauthorized change to the computer any kind of viruses, again, we'll recover that system through the use case and also identify real-time analytics at a file level to show root cause of that actual uh, compromisation. The ROI um, is significant, and this is the main reason that most of our customers purchase the software. So if you have an existing service desk that has 42,000 systems, it's on average um, going to experience two incidents per year at a cost of $36 per incident. And as we all know, this is a very, very um, um, a conservative estimate. So if I have 42,000 machines at two incidents per year per system, that's 84,000 systems. At $36 per incident, that's $3,024,000 with a 5% accelerator based on growth year two and year three. If I have a 90% cost savings because we can repair the system, preboot the operating system in less than 45 seconds, that reduces the $3 million incident cost to roughly $2.7 million. And again, the ROI of $2.7 million leaves an annual cost of $302,000 to operate those same service level tickets. The next use case um, that we talked about was around the snapshot process and around integration with SCCM, uh, Windows Update, and other various solutions. So increasing patch and update success rate was also mentioned in the use case scenario for uh, the PC lifecycle. And as we all know, sometimes the patches or application updates are not well documented. And so we apply a patch to a system and that inevitably breaks the system. And essentially we have to re-image that system or try to roll back that patch or roll forward that patch to bring that system back to a desired state. Now, in our situation, the use case is quite automated because before you actually apply the patch, 
you're going to actually repair the system, bring the system to a desired state, then the patch is going to be applied, the patch is going to be accepted, we run a batch command in the background to take the new delta snapshot, that patch process is now successful and the snapshot process is successful and the update is actually done not only to local partition on the local machine but also it's that snapshot delta is sent to the site server for uh, disaster recovery purposes should the user ever experience a hard drive failure. The ROI for this uh, use case is also very significant and again 42,000 systems, on average, uh, an enterprise corporation will patch once a month, so that would be 12 patches or app updates per year per PC. What we're doing here is calculating a 95% improvement rate because essentially uh, we have a 5% failure rate on those patches across the globe. So 5% failure rate for 42,000 PCs at an update per month is going to leave us with a cost of $907,000. Because we're running that extra repair before the system is actually uh, patched, we'll bring that system to a desired state. The patch will be applied and we'll take a new snapshot. And for whatever reason, if that patch now breaks the system, we can actually revert that system or roll back that system to the last known desired state. So again, 95% uh, pat, patch process improvement uh, would be a significant uh, automation addition to any corporate or global environment. The last use case that we'll talk about is imaging. And again, imaging is used as a feature from the perspective of the imaging use case could be used um, in many different use cases. Could be used for a PC refresh. It could be used for an OS migration from Windows 7 to Windows 10. It could also be used in conjunction on a uh, situation where uh, you have um, a new machine that just comes in um, you know, after the project is over and your local team uh, would like to image a computer um, or maybe a loaner computer has to be imaged uh, for that system. Again, stipulations here are completely automated so that uh, if you are using BitLocker or Drive Encryption, we can actually do an inline image of that system with BitLocker and actually the reduction in time savings is roughly 50%. So we're doing file-based imaging. Post-imaging, we're actually automating the uh, driver injection process. So post-image, you'll load the drivers for that make and model of the computer, as well as any uh, templated applications that you want to load post post image as well. Very similar to Microsoft SCCM. So again, leveraging uh, the industry leader uh, for post application deployments on the actual system. And here's, here's how the ROI is depicted. If we have an existing imaging process, let's say out of the 42,000 computers, we're going to image 14,000 or refresh 14,000 PCs per year. It's typically going to take one hour per PC at $36 per image. Uh, it's roughly $500,000 cost, $504,000. Based on a zero-touch imaging process, again, trying to address uh, the Microsoft uh, 2016 announcement around zero-touch, having that ability to actually do a bare metal image uh, zero-touch at a 50% reduction um, is quite significant in an environment of 42,000 computers. So again, just to summarize the ROI for uh, the use cases, we have five use cases that we think are very, very important. We have a zero-touch imaging and migration process uh, that can be applied. We have an automated update process for increasing patch and, and application success rates. We have an automated drive recovery scenario for failed hard drives. We have service desk self-healing automation, which we saw uh, earlier bringing the cost down by $2.7 million for 84,000 incidents that happen across 42,000 seats uh, per year. And then we have another use case that we haven't really discussed too much, but run the business uh, employee attrition automation. So with a 12% attrition rate for most enterprise or corporate organizations, that 12% Rather than having that machine be re-imaged, we can actually bring that system back to a last known desired state or what we call a day zero state in less than 45 seconds. And again, that's going to have a significant return on investment because you're going to save the time for re-imaging by replacing that with self-heal slash self-repair back to the day zero state 
uh, for the new employee to be productive. So that really wraps up the last section of our uh, presentation. And of course, the summary um, in general uh, will we'll cover not only all of the life cycle, PC life cycle uh, opportunities, but all the use case and all the use case ROI examples that we've provided to support uh, the global deployment uh, for this workspace or device as a service project. We thank you for watching our presentation of the many features and benefits of Persistent Suite. We do realize the ROI figures discussed in this video may be larger or smaller than your own enterprise. However, by applying known industry standards to your existing deployment and adjusting the size and scope of your infrastructure, we can provide you with a more precise return on investment calculation and the approximate length of time it takes for Persistent to pay for itself. We welcome you to contact us for a personalized demo and a proof of concept evaluation trial. Visit our website at www.utopicsoftware.com or give us a call to make arrangements. Thank you for your time today and we look forward to exceeding your expectations.